So, what, who wants to start with the lazy beat? What do you guys think? What, what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, well, I guess. I'll, okay. Well, we could start about um, how you came a uh, how you came across uh, not only him but uh, on a Majesty's Secret Service. So, uh, us, you guys, start. Well, um, well, I like a lot of people. You know, before I really got into the franchise, always assumed, you know, well, this lazy me dude, he only had one movie. It must suck. I mean, what's the other reason could it be? You know, so um, I didn't get into the movie until a lot later, until after I saw, watched a lot of them and I had done some research on the franchise, you know. And I gave it a look. It was on Netflix. It was a while back, like a year or two ago. Netflix had all, had most of the James classic James Bond movies on the instant. So I, I saw it on there and I watched it and I've been a fan ever since. Yeah, for me, I can't actually really call how I stumbled upon uh, <coughs> Lazenby, but uh, all I remember is, I think it was probably, was just probably teenager, early, or before teenage years, and it just, um, it was fun. I liked it, and it was, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I, I didn't probably... Re- I didn't realize at the time how controversial the film was. Or film is. I should say it was. Is. So, I think it's a good, it's a good film. I, uh, so, looking at it now, it's interesting. Let's see. How did I get in? How did I come across the movie? Um, we had, like, one or two Bond books growing up. And it was always the section on on Her Majesty's Secret Service, and you always knew about, you always knew about, well, at the time, we only knew about Pierce Bronson, because the only movie we had at the time was Goldeneye. So, and, you know, I asked my mom about, because, you know, she grew up with the Bond movies, and I asked about, you know, who's this one guy? Who's George Lason? He's like, oh, yeah, he did, a, he did one Bond movie, but he didn't do any other ones. I don't know why. So it was always like, huh, there's that, you know, this is that one guy only did one movie and uh i actually do remember there was a joke on um there was a joke on the simpsons it was one of their halloween specials and the 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 segment was on uh the simpsons the simpsons family uh upgrade their house so that has like an ai intelligence and pierce bronson guest starred on the episode as the voice of the house. I so remember the one. Yeah. <laughs> and when uh, they're like going for the name, they're going for like the voices because they didn't like the default version of it. So they're like, oh, how about 007? And Marge says, George Lazenby? I'm like, oh, that's funny. So I actually did see uh, this, I used to rent the Bond movies from Blockbuster, uh, the VHS. And, you know, I watched Live and Let Die and Man of the Golden Gun. And I did watch On a Magic Secret Service. I didn't really form an opinion at the time because, I, you know, you know how we are when we were kids. We don't really pay attention to the movie unless an action scene is going on. You're just kind of like you're doing something. It's like you're doing something else and you're watching the movie at the same time. So I only remember, like, only specific scenes. Like, I remember the beach scene and the Aston Martin driving onto the beach and the fight scene. And I do remember that line, uh, you know, this never happened to the other fella. And then, you know, we returned the video and I just didn't think about it. I kind of, you know, I was only a casual, at the time, I was only a casual fan and I was still a casual fan when uh, Die Another Day came out. When Casino Royale came out, that's when I like, okay, I want to look more into, I know I'm older, I have access to the internet and all this, so I'm going to look further into the history of James Bond. And I got the, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, my, one of my, a friend of mine who's uh, my guitar teacher at the time, he said, uh, I, we were talking about movies and we were talking about Casino Royale and he, uh, we'd mentioned on a match Secret Service, he says, oh yeah, that's a really good one, you should watch that one. So I got the, uh, the two disc special edition of the movie. And for me, when I watched it, it was like, why haven't I liked this movie before? And it instantly became like, it's my favorite movie. And it's like, this is a per- this is an absolutely perfect film. It looks great. The action's great. The acting's great. The story's great. And so 
yeah, that's how I came across this little movie. Okay, yeah, I, I th- I'm thankful that you added that Casino Royale would got you, would got, really got you in the series because you said die another day. I think people will be concerned. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to say that. Was, I thought it was a little funny. It's like, wait, what? Die another day? <laughs> Oh, oh that, if anything, that that movie kind of turned me off. I was just joking. I'm sorry. It was a bad joke. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I think I think there was a lot a lot of things going on with at the time with the film because you know Sean Connery's gone. So in a sense that being that he's the only guy, people kind of thought this is the end of the series. And I think also with the how dramatic the opening sequences with you don't see. George Lazenby until after the fight and he saves the Bond girl. Crazy. Yeah. And you hear him say the words. So in a sense, they were building up a lot of uh, up up to him so that they're trying to buff him up to be Sean Connery's scale. And I think in a sense, it's being paint, doing a nod to um, Dr. No in the sense that you don't see Sean Connery until after he smokes the lady at a poker right and that's the whole that's the whole thing with every except for roger roger kind of got stiffed out of that and women let die I th- but i think um going to our later to that i think there's a good reason for it but um a reason why they did how that casualness with it but yeah i think in a sense that uh it the problem with uh, lazy b was that i think he was inexperienced i think he was also Actor, he had he, he was like, go ahead and have a good agent. As I, th- I think when you guys said last time, I think it was also that I think he had the probably the toughest Bond movie to do because uh, over all, the all, other Bond films, he wins. This one, he loses. Right. So, my well, my opinion on uh, Lazenby as an actor and as a Bond, I thought he did really well in the role, considering that he didn't have any acting. <laughs> Experience. And there, there, admittedly, there are places uh, in the movie where the, the line that he has says falls a little flat. But I kind of give that, I kind of give that fault to the script. There are parts like there's some like quips that uh, he makes that aren't really funny or any. They're just kind of like it's not really his fault. The line is not that great. But overall, I thought, you know, he was a great Bond, and he could have been. And I really wish he'd done at least one more. And uh, and that last scene, the last scene in the car, you know, that's it's a it's a perfect scene. Just the you know, the direction, there's no music, and the acting, and his acting that scene is was really great. So I I'm so I you know people like to say you know he's wooden, he his awful performance ruined the movie. It didn't it didn't for me. Yeah. Well, weapon. Do you have anything? Really? <laughs> I didn't think yeah, I didn't think his performance was wrong, but eh, not just me. What was that? I, was, I said I didn't think his performance was wooden, but that's just me. But that's just me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think um, I think it was a great bond. I think in the sense that maybe being that I think it's just being my history major. I, I've seen some, I've read some crazy things like, uh, for example, the website Badass of the Week really pushes. Uh, f- uh, fact and fiction to its very limits. I, I've kind of I've grown to not accept the type of idea where um, there's that psychic bond where it's activated and these a- these sleeper agents go in. Black ops should black ops should learn from them. This is how you do it. <laughs> and right. I think I, you just need a couple of hot girls. You don't need uh, former CIA agents screaming. Why the numbers mean, Mason? <laughs> Why the numbers mean? <laughs> but I think it was also great with um, it was it was a neat plot. I think it was also um, I wonder being that Christopher Nolan loves his film. I wonder if it, this is what really inspired him to make such mental films, you know, or yeah. psychological films. He did say that. He said that um, this film was his favorite, and he said that uh, the plot to this film was an inspiration for Inception. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. But I I think what's also Bond in a dream within a dream. Sorry, go ahead. I think it was also, um, I think the, uh, the whole movie was good. I think it was really nice that, in the fact, is, especially after we had You Only Live Twice 
we saw it the last on the like the last two three Sean Connery films where you had this very pushing to the very limits of sci-fi. You have now a more grounded Bond, and they did their best to make him very human. And I think it, it's a, I think it's actually one of the first Bond films where its focus is on Bond himself instead of uh, the plot, which I think is great. Right. I, I think also a need to have Blofeld. I think this type of this Blofeld wasn't so bad. I, I, was, I love this Blofeld. This is my favorite Blofeld. Tony Savalas. Yeah. Yeah, Go because he, he can actually he can actually take Bond on in a fight. I know a lot of people uh, bring up Donald Pleasance, but I you know I like Donald Pleasance. He's a good actor. You know he's great in Halloween and other movies like Escape from New York. But I don't know. He just didn't. Uh, he just didn't. His Blofeld was really different from the Blofeld we did we we did and didn't see in like Thunderball and from Rush of Love. You know, the, those bonds, those bullfolks were very cool and very, you know, uh, you know, there's this, you know, you don't see them and they ha- there's that, you know, it has, you know, but this guy is just kind of like this weird old guy with a scar on his face. I think it yeah. also, I think it also helps that. I think it didn't help was that we're in those, the Sean Connery films where you don't see his face. He had this strong, very imposing voice. So he, in a sense, you knew. He was a boss. It wasn't like there's was no debate about it. he is the boss with that voice. And so with I forgot his, the, the actor's name, not Donald Pleasant. With Donald Pleasance, he had the softer, quieter version. It's like that. This doesn't feel like Blofeld, where um, the, the person who doesn't on Her Majesty's Secret Service. What's his name again? I'm sorry. Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas. Where he, he he continues that. He might not have the, the same voice as in Sean Con- the Sean Connery films, but. He has a strong personality that says he means business. <laughs> he's, the only, right. he's the only Blofeld I've actually felt. He actually poses a legitimate threat to Bond. He's actually Bond's equal. The first one, the first one they've shown, uh, I, I forget his name. You know, and I'm sure he seems smart, but at the same time, he looks like a car. The first sign of trouble, he runs. Yeah. He's out of there. And then the third one... Well, uh, in drag. Still, yeah, he was a clown. It was a complete clown. You couldn't take him seriously. I, I think was also was great about the film is that you we were talking about equal. He thinks he thinks just as ruthlessly as Bond. For example, and said, "Okay, look, we're Bond is and the lady are ahead of us. We're gonna lose a lot more guys, cause an avalanche." <laughs> that was just. <laughs> That was a really great idea. I was like, who cares? It's not because I'm evil. He just, look, I, I don't have time for this. I'm going to just kill him with an avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, all right, let me, let me pose this question to you guys because this is often brought up whenever people discuss this movie. And it's this, I don't think, I don't believe this notion, but people often say if Connery was in this movie, it would have been the best James Bond movie. What do you guys think? No. I, I think it just. I think what would have happened was. I think, I think it might have might have been okay. I think I think the film would have been good. I think just still the story would have been controversial because you have a human, a very human bond, and also again you have Bond losing. Oh, hi, hey, Mike. Michael. I just I don't think Connery's Bond could really reach the same emotional depth depth that's really needed. For you know some of the scenes of this movie, like I don't think you know Sean Connery could pull off that last scene in the car when he's holding a dead body. You know, I think he could. I think he could. I think it just. Um, I don't. Yeah, he probably could, but not as well as what uh, George Lazenby did. You know, it could. I think it's it's still. I think it's very difficult to say because it's just. I'm not, I'm not trying to say you're. Well, I'm not trying to downplay it. Your argument. I think the problem is is just that um. It just if it coulda woulda, and it, there's so many things that could, that have happened. Because for example, if you look at Diamonds Are Forever, it's probably it is Sean Connery's worst Bond film. He doesn't care. He's very bored. He did it for the as someone said, did it for the check and later donated it to some charity. And I think it just it, it depends on how much the person cares. I think in a sense that Lazby was very hungry for the role. He wanted to do it. He want he had some, he had a lot to prove, and so. I, so there's all those type of factors in. I think Sean Connery, if he 
if in his prime he really cared about the Bond film, I think he could have done just as well. I think the problem would have been, again, just I think seeing Bond cry being human would have yeah. been the problem. I think that's what I was trying to get to. I mean, I'm not saying that Sean Connery couldn't do it. I'm, I'm, what I was trying to say was that I don't think his Bond could do it. Because at that point, five movies in, you know, his Bond has been so well established that seeing Sean Connery James Bond cry, I just don't think would fly with people. But George Lazenby, on the other hand, you know, is a completely new guy, you know. Okay. And I think... Uh, Somebody like established his take on the character yet. What I think, um, uh, uh, I think I, that, uh, oh, go ahead. No, I just, I, you sound like it's fading out. So I was like, no, I, I'm trying to formulate my words. Uh, uh, I think, I don't think Connery would have worked because at the time there was so much bad blood between him and the producers. And, you know, he was already done with the role at on uh, You Only Live Twice. I think he just would have brought that same, like, kind of lazy attitude to On Her Majesty's Secret Service. I don't think he would have done a good performance in that movie. Maybe if the movie had been done early, like, after Goldfinger, maybe. But here, no, I don't think he would have turned in a good performance. I think this could have, film could have um, ended his, um, his Bond career. In a sense, if he didn't, if he didn't set, he didn't throw in the towel. I think the producers would have, because of the negative um, feedback from the uh, or the films, like Bond crying, Bond losing. What is this sorcery? Because, in a sense, that even it was, it's actually pretty incredible. You know, within five to six films, people have seen him as a sex object, an action hero, the person you want, people want to become. So, seeing this. Bond hit this low is very unnatural for some people. Right, because I, especially back then, you know, I think today we, we, we take our Bond movies very seriously now, but back then it was just a piece of escapism for many people. Okay. Bond be serious business. And uh, uh, since we only have uh, five minutes left, I just want to uh, talk briefly about um, uh, just other things I like about the movie. Uh, the stunts are great. The theme the, song. Yes, John Barry. Oh, this, yeah. was, this was probably. I love that song. I do. I play it all the time. It's yeah, that's catchy. I actually remember it. I actually, of all the film Bond films, that's the one I remember the most. Interestingly. Yeah. Yeah, with that with that great uh, synthesizer sound they have in there. I, f- I forget it's been a it's been a long long time since I watched it, so bear with me. But it, did they do the same thing what they did with from R- Russia with Love, where they had those dramatic openings like Harry Saltzman presents, and then it goes into James Bond? Did they do the same thing with uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, and then they got into the theme? Because I can't remember. Oh, yeah, you mean like um, in the, uh, the, the, t- the credit sequence or the gun barrel? Uh, the credit sequence. Then, like, so they had the John trumpets and the drums. Dun, 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 dun. I forgot how it went, but I, I do yeah. a terrible injustice for it. They do say uh, Harry Sotspin covered Broccoli Presents, and then it says Ian Fleming's James Bond, uh, Ian, Fleming, Ian Fleming's On a Match of Secret Service, and it says starring George Lazenby. Yeah. I think that was a great opening for me. Just that, that the tr- um, the trumpets and the uh, drums, and then it got into the the synthesizers. Yeah, that's how you do see so synthesizers. <laughs> yeah. that was that, uh, that was actually I think one of the first major motion pictures to use uh, the new Moog synthesizer, which had just been invented around that time. I think it's also interesting to think about. You see, uh, I forgot the character and what how he his importance or his role in the film, but his Bond's partner that was a, a climber and you see him in the film, he dies. He's yeah. hanging from, like, and I think it was supposedly the stage it as a uh, climbing accident, but in a sense, I forgot what he was, how what his role was, but he did it. It was an interesting secondary character. They, uh, not many of the Bond films do that much for the secondary, the secondary Bond supporting character. If that makes sense. Yeah. He's Good like guy. the, and he's, 
he's the sacrificial lamb in this movie. And they don't really, I mean, he's giving a name in the credits. I can't remember what his name was. But they don't actually say if he's like MI6. I, I, I think he's MI6. He's British. So I guess he was just some agent that, because remember, uh, he helped Bond out when he broke into Gumboat's office in, uh, in Switzerland. So he, he, must, he must have been a colleague of Bond. We just said, I hey, could work with that um, criminal organization. I forget its name. Oh, Draco Construction? Yeah, but he was a leader of some mob, wasn't he? I'm not sure. It's been a long, long time since I've watched that film. In the books, he was. I don't know if he was in the movies, but in the book, he was. And assuming how close the adaption of the novel it, movie is, in fact, so close of adaption, it even leads to plot holes. I I guess it probably still is. Yeah, I, I being that we were, we were closing up on Blazingby, I think I, I want to put it out there. I think in a sense that it was good for Blazingby to step out of the role because I think people were not ready for the Bond at the time, and I think that if he didn't step out of the role, and being that, and the, the producers want to get rid of him, I think it would have been a really big mess because. He, where Sean Connery says, "I'm done. That's it." And he, being that he's a triple, he 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 has beca- became a triple A actor because of Bond. You can't really do anything about it because he made his decision. You don't want to alienate a triple A actor for the rest of United Artists Artists uh, Studios. So you can't do much about it. But with Lazenby, if he said no, I'm going. He's going to drag his feet. It would have been a really big mess and might have. Endangered the Bond franchise even further. No, I disagree. I disagree that um, because when the I when the movie was released, by the time it got released, he had already announced that he wasn't going to do another James Bond movie. I think that was to uh, that was a that was to his detriment because he now when he since he only did one, he became forgotten because Connery came back, and then we moved on to more, and he became forgotten. I think if he stuck with the role and did at least two or three movies, he would have been fine. I don't think he. I don't think he would have endangered the series because, I like. Uh, aside from like the UK tabloid press, uh, the movie was actually well reviewed when it came out in 1969. It got pretty good. It got moderate to good reviews. Of course, you know that some of the UK press were tearing it apart, but it wasn't like. When the movie came out, it wasn't like this huge disaster. Okay, gotcha. Hey, Webman, do you have anything to say? I think uh, it's almost closing time, so do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah, not really. I've already said pretty much everything i got to say. Anything else, Darkseid? Really, I could, talk about, I could talk about this movie for like an hour because I love it so much. Uh, no, I don't, have, I don't think I have anything else to say except it's my favorite Bond movie. It's probably one of the most well-directed Bond movies. Mm-hmm. It has the best score and George Lazenby is easily one of my second or third favorite James Bond. Fair enough. Fair I agree. It's, up, it's my second favorite. It's a good, it's a great film. I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if you didn't you know, judge it in put it in, in position, but yeah, it's a great film. A couple things might have been changed, like the gun barrel sequence. I didn't like how he, that was shot, but no pun intended, but uh, besides, but besides that, it was a great film. I think it was a great way. I think it showed a great attempt to bring in a new actor. It was a great way to, or, or attempt to bring a new Bond. And I think, and I think this is a good way to move on to the next section.